What's good, y'all? It's been a minute, but I am back. Got another quick video. Wow. This one won't be quick, but uh, E30, steering rack. Check me out. So, Z3 steering rack, courtesy of eBay. Uh, tire rods, FCP Euro. This line here is the one that was cracked and leaking all over the place. Condor Speed Shop steering knuckle and garagistic spacers for the Z3 rack. So hopefully this can all get done today so I can get on to my other projects. But like I was saying, uh, hopefully this will be done today. Let's get to it. So I apologize in advance because everything recorded after this is gonna be trash. So I'm gonna go over this briefly just so I can just cover it really quick, just in case I miss something in the video. I recommend draining the power steering fluid beforehand to help minimize the mess made during the swap. You don't want to get it all disgusting down there. That's what I was dealing with and it made it a lot harder than it had to be. I also recommend getting new um, power steering lines. Uh, Chase Bays has a kit that works perfectly. At the time of this video though, they are out of stock, so don't plan on that unless you check on it beforehand. It's a good recommendation though because bending the lines is super difficult. So to start, remove the tire rods. After that, you can remove the lines from the bottom of the rack. Then the two main bolts on the subframe and the top and bottom bolts of the steering knuckle. Bend the tabs out of the way and pull out. So I opted to undo the power steering lines from the reservoir and the pump. I couldn't get enough clearance underneath to get my adjustable wrench on one of the lines so it was just easier doing it this way and leaving them attached so my tire rods were seized up in the wheel hub and i cannot get them loose so uh quick google search apparently wd-40 and a torch From what I understand, the proper method is to light it on fire, burn it up first, and then spray the WD-40. And I guess the heat creates a, a pressure and it gets absorbed into the cracks and crevices and it kind of loosens it up. I had to do this maybe three or four times before it actually broke loose, but it did work and I had to do it on both sides. So next is mostly a preference thing. If you want to remove the lines from the bottom of the steering rack, that now will be a good time to do it. And if not, then I went ahead and detached the uh, the top and the bottom 13 millimeter bolts, attaching the steering knuckle to the top of the steering column and to the steering rack. So I could basically release it. Once you get these out, it's still not going to drop down or release really easily. I had to use a, uh, a flathead screwdriver and a mallet to kind of separate the uh, kind of the clamps holding it to the steering column. And that was pretty much what, what got it loose and then it would drop out of the car. So I ended up having to bend both tabs, more so on the passenger side, but I bent it a little on the driver's side also just to get it around the lines. I didn't bend it too much, just enough to get it over and it bent back in place pretty easily. Once the steering rack was out of the car, I had more space and I could remove the top 13 millimeter bolt from the knuckle. I actually didn't remove it all the way the first time. I just removed the bottom one to pull the rack out and uh, pull it off the car. I did have to wiggle the steering wheel a little bit and um, lock it so it wouldn't turn in place, but it did come out without too much resistance. So that's where I stopped for the day. After my dog busted out the door and my homie came over, I figured it was a good time to take a break. I quit. And off camera, I had tried to bend the power steering lines into place, but that process is trash, so hence the recommendation. So I'm just gonna use a block off kit or a power steering delete until the Chase Base kit is available. But picking up where I left off, um, here's where the install gets a little different depending on which steering knuckle you decided to go with. I opted to do the Condor Speed Shop knuckle. I figured it could save me some time because I didn't want to take the time to modify the OEM knuckle. 
It also seems to save space in the engine bay if you're concerned about clearance because it is quite smaller than the OEM knuckle. So with that being said, let's get back into it. So the way I did this with the engine and stuff in the car is I took the Condor Speed Shop steering knuckle and placed it in the car and then placed the steering rack back into the car also. I tightened one bolt on the steering rack and the tire rods so I would know what position the steering rack would be in in relation to the knuckle fully assembled. So with the knuckle fully assembled and the rack in place, you want to mark the, the holes on the steering knuckle for your indents that are going to need to be drilled. I used a permanent marker, but a paint marker will probably work well too. I also decided here if I wanted to put the garagistic spacers on the top or bottom of the steering rack. If you put it on the top, then the steering rack is going to remain in its level position. But if you put them on the bottom of the steering rack, then you can correct any bump steer issues or it helps correct bump steer issues. But I ended up going with the top because I found it easier to put the spacers on on the top of the rack versus on the bottom. So once your indents are drilled, you're going to want to go ahead and use the screws that came in the kit and tighten those with an Allen wrench. I opted to do all the tightening on the ground and then re-enter the steering rack and the steering knuckle back into the car all as one piece. Once it was in, I went ahead and tightened the top, the top part of the steering knuckle that connects it to the steering shaft. So with the rack back in the car, I found that it was easiest to unbend the tabs with the thick Allen wrench. So that took care of that and that pretty much finishes up the job. Everything except the steering lines which I'll have to do at a later date. Every tiny little movement definitely moves those wheels. So nice and tight. Oh shit, I didn't know that worked. <laughs> so I apologize, I swear that the quality and the consistency is going to get better. It's just tough trying to balance the beast, the classic that's getting entered into a show here soon. Brother moved in, then this. Still Medusa, still ugly, but uh, making progress. That oil cooler line that was leaking all over the place, we got that replaced. I did that off camera. Um, the coolant system was completely empty. I'm pretty sure it leaked out, I'm not sure where, so once I figure that out, I'll probably put the face back on. Also picked up some $30 spacers to kind of fix the stance. I think that was a success also. And if anybody has any tips for getting the hood to stay closed, please send them my way because I have not been able to get it to stay closed since I got it. And then once all that's complete, man, we can move on to the interior, hit these exposed wires, clean this up. And honestly, I think I might make this my daily. But as usual, thank you again for checking me out. I hope this helps somebody. Maybe trying to put on a steering rack or something. But uh, remember to like, comment, subscribe. Because as you can see, I got a lot going on. Y'all be cool, man. I'm out.